Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to talk about multiple intelligences. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences. If a scientist told you that they had never run a single scientific experiment to test their theory, would you trust them? How about if they told you they intentionally called it something misleading just to bring attention to their theory? You would call them attention seeking probably a liar, and most definitely not a good scientist. Today, we're going to talk about how one scientist did just that and has negatively impacted psychology and education for generations. If you've watched our other videos about intelligences, you know that general intelligence, first developed by Charles Spearman, is the best, most reliable measurement and theory that we currently have about intelligence. General intelligence, or G, states that there is just one type of intelligence that impacts us across everything we do. It's been tested for decades and continues to hold true. However, just because something is scientifically true doesn't necessarily mean people like it. <laughs> Enter Howard Gardner. In 1983, Gardner devised his theory of multiple intelligences to, as he put it, challenge those psychologists who believed they owned the word intelligence. Gardner listed different types of intelligences, linguistic intelligence, logical intelligence, musical intelligence, bodily kinesthetic intelligence, spatial intelligence, naturalist intelligence, interpersonal intelligence, and intrapersonal intelligence. Let's break down what each one is before we continue discussing the theory as a whole. Linguistic intelligence is your ability to comprehend language. So, if you speak more than one language or are especially adept at your native language, like if you're, say, a poet, Gardner would say you have a high linguistic intelligence. The next is logical intelligence. Those high in talents at mathematics or patterns, logic, after that is musical intelligence, and this one is exactly what it sounds like. You have a musical talent. You're good at things like rhythm and pitch and tone. Bodily kinesthetic intelligence is being really talented at how your body does things. So chances are, if you're a good athlete, you have a high body kinesthetic intelligence. Someone who wanted to be an engineer or in construction would need a high spatial intelligence since that's what you need to be talented at perceiving objects and their relationship between objects in space. Next is naturalist intelligence, or your capacity to appreciate nature. The last two kind of go together. Interpersonal intelligence, your ability to understand the emotional states of others, and intrapersonal intelligence, which is the talent of understanding your own feelings. You probably heard me repeat one word over and over there. Talent. Most of the intelligences that Gardner defined are more likely best called skills or talents, except for maybe naturalistic. That's just appreciating nature. I mean, we all like trees. I'm not sure why this one is a thing. Calling them intelligences in science would suggest that scoring high on a test of, say, musical intelligence would hold some sort of predictive power. But that simply isn't the case. What we do have is a complete lack of information. This has been a major theory taught in schools for a long time. If there were scientific tests out there that could prove some kind of predictive power, we'd be able to find those studies. According to Gardner, we all have each of these abilities to a greater or lesser degree. But why these? Gardner never really said. If we can have intelligence in different domains, 
Why not a gastronomic intelligence for those who are really good at cooking and tastes and flavors? Or a mechanical intelligence for those who are really good at understanding computer programming or the internal workings of a car? Uh, why not generational intelligence for those who are especially talented at working with kids or the elderly? Or animal intelligence for those who have a special gift working with and understanding animals? The list goes on and on. If we're going to try to measure aptitudes or talents as intelligences, what makes these eight skills more special than any others? Gardner himself has stated repeatedly that he's not particularly connected to the list he developed. He first developed and encourages others to actually go find whatever new intelligences they want. I'm gonna put in for two-faced intelligence. That's when you're really good at spotting when a scientist is trying to lie to you and make you feel better about yourself. Gardner's intention was to challenge current scientific evidence on the strength of predictive power of general intelligence. He wanted to redefine how intelligence was viewed. But in science, how we define words is very important. When any scientist writes a paper or explores a scientific concept, they're expected to operationalize their definitions. When scientists operationalize a definition, it means that they specifically state how that word or concept is being explained and measured so that other scientists can understand how to measure that concept in the exact same way. It makes science consistent. When someone decides to take a word that everyone understands the meaning of and just change that definition for no practical reason, not only does it not make sense, it can be intentionally misleading. Say I took a word or concept that most everyone has an idea of what it means. Like for example, the word minute. We would operationally define that as 60 seconds. And we all have a pretty good idea of how to measure a minute. You just take out a stopwatch or the timer on your phone. We all have a good understanding of a minute. But if someone comes along and decides that they don't personally agree with the idea of a minute as everyone accepts it, they think a minute should be 323 seconds. They have no data as to why the change should be made. They simply state that it must be so and then proceed to educate people on their new 323 second minute, all the while just still calling it a minute. Some people start accepting the new minute as truth, begin teaching it to others, and soon we just have a ton of confusion because it impacts other things, like how long is an hour now? Consistency is key in science, and Gardner decided to completely dismiss that without any compelling evidence to do so. And this myth has been around for about 35 years. In those 35 years, there has been no scientific validation found for Gardner's multiple intelligences theory. Gardner currently runs a research center that explores educational topics like intelligence and creativity and ethics at Harvard. However, he has still yet to run an experiment which would illustrate any of his intelligences. Instead, he writes about the dangers of debunking current theories. Yeah. So the question then becomes why? Why has this gotten to be so popular that a lot of psychologists still teach it as scientific fact? I've done a lot of exploration into this, and honestly, my best answer to you is that people don't like to think of themselves as unintelligent. We place a huge social stigma on being not smart. Being not smart has nothing to do with how good or bad of a person you are. We place a huge social pressure on other things like making money too, but certainly being rich doesn't mean you're good or better than anyone else. Until the scientific proof comes out either in support of or denying Gardner's multiple intelligences, I just think it might be better done to teach this theory for what it is. A lovely idea that's going to make a lot of people feel better about their intelligence or their talents but that doesn't yet have any scientific support. If you want to find out more about where your intelligence comes from, make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. 
Until next time, keep thinking, and I'll see y'all later. Bye. Okay, so one time I found this bag of gummy bears in my car that had melted into one big giant gummy bear. But I ate it anyway. <laughs> what kind of intelligence is that? Thank you.